Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends, and we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy, because now it's time to rewind. Someone like Warwick Davis, uh, you know, I guess that thinking obviously paid off because a lot of his movies are quite memorable. A lot of his roles. Oh, oh, hell yeah. I mean, he was even in Labyrinth, one of my faves. So Love it is, it's a really interesting, you know, two-sided conversation where, yeah, if you stay away from those roles, not only are you not uh, working and making the money and, and just being in films, if that's what your goal is, but also you possibly are not in such memorable roles like Warwick Davis. So. That's right. interesting. So it's, you know, I mean, listen, Warwick Davis has been in almost, he was, he was in just about every single Star Wars movie, except for, uh, I think in episodes two and three, he wasn't in those movies. Yeah. But he was in, uh, oh, that's not true, actually. I think he was in those as well. I mean, he literally, he was in all the Star Wars movies because, and he was a huge Star Wars fan. So yeah, cause d did you know, I mean, you might've seen this online and I saw it in the credits because I, I watched through to just see who's uh, in there. George sure. Lucas gets a special thanks because I guess... Warwick Davis was under contract with Lucas and they and, and George Lucas gave his approval to let him go, you know, for two months to go shoot this Leprechaun movie. So how funny that that big name is. is I mean, hey, list, there right? you go. And then what happens is basically they're, they're basically just battling this Leprechaun and it gets very slapsticky. Yep. Oh, yeah. And there's like, you know, it also borders lines into, you know, the idea that like it's not just a Leprechaun, but the Leprechaun. This leprechaun comes from Irish folklore. The mm -hmm. leprechaun has to be Irish. So then you go into like, there's this sort of like, you have like, uh, and again, I don't know how Irish people feel about it. And again, I'm not like here to like point out all that stuff, you know, it's, yeah, no, it's, of its, time. it's part of the topic. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah, no, it's just interesting how like, you know, then, you know, he, that like goes one of the gags is that like, he has to polish shoes. It's like, it was it, like, he can't resist. Oh my God, Jeff. Polishing yeah, I, shoes. <laughs> I forgot about them. There is a they're moment. They're throwing the shoes. They're throwing the him, shoes and he's like, at ah, him. He keeps, he has when, to keep absolutely. The shoes. When Jennifer's got to go check out the old man who I forgot is, they think still well he is still alive from the beginning i thought he just died because he has like a heart attack stroke but he's in i the, don't remember what happened the, to him. He, the he old was there. like old person's home and so right, she's got to right, get right, there right, right. Yes. right and so to distract this leprechaun who's lurking around the house they're throwing all these shoes which also i'm like wait a minute where are all these shoes coming from i mean this house is like abandoned so they just have this whole pile of shoes and i completely forgot he literally is bending over and furiously you know shining the shoes wiping them right. down and letting her go oh yeah that was now, and he also <laughs> oh what what is fun i don't know if this was uh the, the in the writing or if this was warwick's idea but the leprechaun typically and i think this is true in all the leprechaun movies the, rep, the leprechaun rhymes all of his dialogue is rhyming which is a lot so of it great. is yes oh it's so great it's so it's uh, really fun <laughs> mischievous and 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 yeah. in, in the first one at least since i rewatched it earlier today he sings songs you know he sings um right uh pocket full of pose like he's just playing uh, oh like, yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Sings, the jumping he's he's on the uh he's on the pogo stick yeah yeah oh that's a great right? death was oh in, yeah was that in one or was that in three I don't well, remember. maybe it comes back. It's been a long, it's been decades this since I've seen the sequels. But he uh, he's yeah, he's singing on Nick the Nick Patty at whack and he's bouncing on the guy's stomach. Oh, that I think is that's a death. In, maybe that is in one. Yeah, it, at least they do it definitely in one. Maybe they do it again, but okay. that is well, pretty I'll tell you gnarly. Something. As a child, I remember that that's in like my core memories yes. of like trauma. We've talked about kinder trauma, you know, <laughs> yeah. and you know, that is that was a kinder trauma moment for me seeing uh someone get pogo stick to oh death. Oh my gosh, Jeff. That was super I, serious when I was a kid. That was like I a completely agree. 
serious like wow that person is dying that way it's isn't so that up. so funny that's so wild that yeah you and i have the same perspective because it's so goofy if we saw this now in yeah, our 30s just, just oh my goofy. god we'd be like howling with yeah. laughter but because we saw it when it was newer newish yeah. oh my gosh at that age i remember that so well. that is a gnarly death when really it isn't but to me it's like right. oh, can you imagine you're lying there he's just bitten your leg and now he's just jumping on the pogo stick on you and the guy's all bloody oh my god what a death there are some good deaths i have to say this old leg he played one he played pogo on his life teach you to steal me gold <laughs> And like you said, you're so right. Things get very slapstick because, you know, this movie is obviously not good, but there are some moments where I'm like, okay, I'm focused. Well, I'm into it. Along. I'm there's, following there's along. Different types of good. I mean, listen, here's the thing. Like you say that this movie is not good. And I know what you mean when you say well, that, yeah. uh -huh. but like there's, you know, there is a category of like, if someone were to ask me, is this movie good? I would say yes, but. Would I say it's good in the way that like Saving Private Ryan is good? No, of course not. It's yeah. it's it's good in that it's so bad. Like that's what makes it good is that it's bad. And there's yeah. a whole vibe in movies that I love. Like for instance, I just watched the uh, Buttercream Gang, which if you have not seen, mm -hmm. oh my god, is. it's on YouTube. It's on okay. YouTube. It's uh, totally out of print. It's called the Buttercream Gang. It came out in '92, and it's just one of those movies that's it's just so bad that it's great. And I don't think, you know, low, low budget horror films don't fall into that, that paradigm. But if I have to rank, you know, Leprechaun on Letterbox, you know, I might yeah. give it four stars, but I'm not giving it four out of five stars because it's a four out of five star movie. Right. I'm giving it four out of five stars because I liked it four out of five stars. <laughs> and so I, I gauge my movies in that kind of way. So yeah. it's like kind of funny how like, like a, a masterpiece, like a, like a freaking masterpiece will get five stars. But yet I also rated dead alive five stars is, yeah. is dead alive a five star movie to me. It is. So yeah. I gave it five stars, but a lot of people would probably disagree. So it's like that weird, it's like this weird sort of thing where like something can be good without actually being good. And that's the category mm -hmm. that I think leprechaun and its ilk kind of fall into where it's like yeah yes i know this is not a five-star movie but like i still would give it like i probably would give i don't know what i rated leprechaun mm. uh, I, but i'd imagine probably like three and a half stars because okay. i love it you know yeah. but like it's not you know like if that if it wasn't a good like there are some movies that are so bad but yet i'll i'll still rate them kind of high because what i personally love about them are like if I really enjoy them. And then movies that I think are like really bad or like, like there are some movies that are like people really, really love or whatever. And mm -hmm. I give it like, I don't know, like one star. Cause I just don't think it's good. And it's like totally considered a good movie. So I don't know. I think yeah. it's like, a, it's very, it's very subjective. Totally. totally but totally you know, valid. you bring up a good point about bad movies that are good because I agree with you. This movie is good. I enjoy it. It makes me smile, which I don't know what that says about me. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> but, um, I think what I mean when I say it's not a good movie is you and I know we have we have uh, better horror films that we appreciate sure. other you know what I mean Leprechaun isn't a movie that we probably think about more than a couple times a year you know and it's like oh you know yeah. what I mean oh. so there are other horror movies that really last in even horror comedies right that that are better but at least you know we can appreciate this for what it is this fun mm -hmm. little under one million dollar you know movie. <laughs> My ear! He, he got my ear! You got the back door, right? Ow! You gotta stop the bleeding. Now, tell me, Jeff, from all the sequels, from what you remember, do you uh, regard them as highly as the first one? Or even in this franchise, I mean, do they really get, you know, really so awful? I gotta tell you, I, I think four and five are probably the best. Like, wow! So in I the hood, the hood is where it's at. Okay. Oh yeah, with Ice T is in it. Um, <laughs> you know, you don't. That's a thing. Like, that's the thing. This doesn't operate by like you know standard rules. Like, your great example. I'm currently watching. You saw that I was watching Silent Night, Deadly Night. Oh yeah. Oh, what you? So did you watch all of them? No, I've not seen one and two yet. 
Oh my God, Jeff. I know. Okay. Hilarious. So I started because <laughs> I was interviewing Brian Usner. I watched part four. It was the first one that I saw. Oh, and then I haven't from seen that part one. four, I watched part three, and then after part three, I watched part five. Oh, God. which is, and then I stopped, and I, I'll probably wait till next year till at yeah. Christmas time. To I know, watch isn't that funny? The, you're, this is so funny how like just to go out of order and to like do it like that. You honestly, know? I mean, you're probably doing it the right way because it's not like that franchise is that great, but it is well, funny four, how four is really good and five. Is it? Let me tell you something. Out of three, four, and five, I think five might be the best one. Really? Is one of them yeah. with Clint Howard, or am I getting my Clint Howard in both four and five? He has okay. just a cameo in five. Okay. Mickey Rooney is in five. Oh God, Mickey and Rooney. Oh. I got to tell you, like, it, these are real. I mean, part five, like, could be its own. That's what Brian Hughes is really good at. He he also did. He's the director of Return of the Dead 3 okay. on Trimark. Yep. And as a matter of fact, I think Silent Night, Deadly Night, part four, The Initiation, which is about witches. That was uh, right around this on, time. Was that Trimark? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I think that was also Trimark. So okay. he had a deal. With, he had a deal over at Trimark. And um, it's just kind of funny because, like. It's just kind of funny, like though, like it's how like these these weird middle sequels are like a great example. And uh, I, you know, I get I catch hell for this all the time, but you know, New Nightmares, I think the oh. best and my favorite. Oh, uh, it's so good. It's the best one, it, and it's the that's last pretty, one. I know. Yeah. So what does that say? You know, to at least I don't know. I feel like when it comes to like horror films, certain horror films. You know, sequels are, you know, sometimes better than mm -hmm. even the original. So I don't really go by mm -hmm. I don't really think that works even for the Leprechaun series where, like, literally every one of them is so batshit crazy <laughs> that, like, yeah. they're all great. Like, it's just, what do you, what great do you want? Do you want to see right. Jennifer Aniston running away from Warwick Davis dressed as a leprechaun? Or do you want to see... Do you want to see like aliens, like the Marines from Aliens, battling a space leprechaun? Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> like, I think I, in outer right. space. Like, so, what do you want? It's so, all for there. <laughs> would you say, since I've only seen one, two, and three, should I watch? So oh, should, I guess yeah. I should continue. Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll, I'll pick you it up with to. with space, and then I'll go to yes. the hood. Okay, I don't oh know how god. I I I think I am going to put my foot down, even though I am curious how Ozzy the Mark Holton character from the original. I am curious because he comes back in this latest one, but I agree. That's a I, good hook. That is a I, good hook. If you're going to bring back, if you're going to get, if you're going to peep, my curiosity is now peaked a little bit because I know. you said that. Cause I'm like, now I want to see why, like they brought that dude back. Yeah. Well, I feel like has not been in anything in years. So like, I know. Him. So I'm, yeah, to see him I'm interested. And, because, you know, on this latest rewatch, obviously Jennifer Aniston's the lead. She's first build. She's, she does right. kind of the most, uh, you know, final act fighting because she's the only right. one that hasn't really gotten hurt. Um, but at times, rewatching it, you know, Ozzy to me kind of almost feels like the co lead because he's the one that first has an interaction with the leprechaun in the basement and no one believes him. Oh, he's this right. special guy. You know, he, he's lost his marbles kind of thing. You know, so no one throughout the whole movie, no one believes him until it's Doesn't way he, he too nails, late. He nails the four leaf clover on the barrel in the first place. That's what keeps him in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's the one that says you gotta. Oh no, I'm sorry. No, Grady, the old man, is the one that puts the four leaf clover on the box right. in the beginning, and then he tells Jennifer Aniston in a pretty sick reveal. So she's running through these creepy halls that no one is in at this rest home. Uh, Warwick Davis, our leprechaun, which I realize we never know the leprechaun's name. Isn't that kind of weird? I think he might. I think he might have a name in the later ones. It, yeah, maybe yeah. in the later they. Yeah, but in this one at least he's just actually the, no, the boy. The leprechaun. Yeah, the boy at the end he slingshots uh, his a piece of four gum clover. to the four leaf clover and it goes yeah. right and he just says, "Hey, lep." And then I think he says, <laughs> fuck you, Lucky Charms. So I'm like, Lep. And that's what I was typing in my notes. I was just like, Lep goes here, Lep goes there. And I'm like, oh, okay, Lep. That's his nickname. But anyway, um, we find out about the, or at least Jennifer Aniston finds out about the four-leaf clover because as she's running from Warwick Davis in this goofy wheelchair thing, then she runs to the elevator, which I feel like every good schlocky horror movie has to have an elevator of course, moment. Of course. Right? The door's shut. And just as we think like, okay, next scene, in a really good surprise, I have to say, Old man Grady, who she's there to see, falls, do you remember, from the top of the elevator. He just dangles down, right? And he's covered in blood. The leprechaun has got him, but he's not dead yet. And he tells her, you got to 
put a, right. a four leaf clover on his body. You have to touch him with it. And that's how he dies. And in true early nineties, <laughs> bad horror after he tells her this upside down and I have to say, Jennifer Aniston's good. She's got some tears. I don't know if they're real, yeah. but she's selling it. She's good. And she's yeah. funny when she needs to be. You know, you can tell there was a comedy star in there. She's looking up at him and she's thanking him. And then he very, uh, very goofily dies in this big huff. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this movie is just too much fun, right? He's driving and he's not actually in the car. He's oh. floating. <laughs> and he gets pulled over by the cops. Yeah. And then uh -huh. the, the cops are like, how old are you? He's like, I'm 600 years old. <laughs> yes. And then he rips the cop's face. Yeah. He's in this right. little toy car from the shop where he does. Oh, is that logo. what it is? He's in a yes. toy car. Yeah. He's in this like silly. That's what that like. It's funny because every now and then, and I had read, maybe you did too, that the producers were all torn. Trimark wanted a Freddy, a Chucky, you know, that horror comedy. They wanted Critters, right. all they that kind of stuff. They argued about the tone, and you can yes. see it. The tone you is can tell. wonky. It's, yes, it's, the tone is definitely wonky. And it, it and apparently the director, this was directed by Mark Jones, um, he, I guess, was okay with Warwick because it was, I guess it stemmed kind of Warwick Davis was the one as he's doing this. He wanted to lean more comedy. And like we said, with uh, all those horror movies, a lot of them were, you know, kind of schlocky comedy. So I think he thought, all right, well, this just, I'm feeling like these lines are so goofy. I got to lean into comedy. That's what's kind of popular in these horror movies right now. And the director didn't fight him. Apparently, Mark Jones was like agreed, agreeing with him on that and was okay Jones with it. Did. And right uh, yeah, he uh, he went on to do Rumpelstiltskin a couple years later, a wow. crazy horror movie as well. I remember well, he's that was a lot. He wrote a lot of freaking movies, man. A lot freaking of TV movies. too. Before this, he did a ton <laughs> of TV. So he's been writing for years and years and years. He directed eight movies. Yeah, yeah. But um, I just thought that was interesting because so they're on board with it being funny. Trimark apparently wanted it to be funny, but the producers, other I guess the production company that hired mark jones i don't know they really wanted it gory scary serious so you can definitely feel at times when it's gory serious gory funny scary serious scary funny you know so it, it so really does meander a little the good bit but. thing the good thing about that though is that sometimes when when they do have the they do do these like sort of like when they're on the fence about stuff you do get these very weird sort of mm -hmm movies that will shift from one one like one tone to the other tone or they sometimes they ride the edge yep. of both in a way that just kind of works for the movie and i feel like that's what's happening with leprechaun because you know it goes like for instance he's a very grotesque looking creature at least from you know oh yeah what you what you what you picture in your mind even if you're like actually like looking at him, maybe like you're watching a Blu-ray and it's high def and like you can kind of see that the makeup looks cheap or whatever, hmm. but you know, the makeup, I mean, that was pretty complicated makeup stuff. So it's like, oh, yeah. you know, when you look at the make the grotesque makeup and then pair that with comedy, cause you know, much like colors, you know, everything has like, you know, uh, genres have their own sort of complementary wheel hmm. and the opposite the two opposites are comedy and horror. They they directly complement each other. So yep. something that's really scary can also be really funny, and something mm -hmm. that's really funny can also be really scary. And that's why you get so many great comedy horror and horror comedy. And isn't it funny how all I've done is inverse those words, but you know exactly <laughs> what I mean. Oh, totally. I say a horror comedy versus a comedy horror, and I can think of like a half a dozen movies that fall into – like a great example, what is like a comedy horror? I think of, well, I mean, maybe this is more of a spoof, but I think of like Dracula Dead and Loving It. Oh, I love that one. Which yep. is, you know, firmly a comedy first before it is, you know, doing yes. anything, you know, in the horror realm. And it's not even really horror. The horror element is just that it has Dracula. Yeah. And then versus a horror comedy, mm -hmm. which, you know, you, you got your Evil Dead 2. Mm -hmm. You know, you got House. You got these things where oh, yeah, it is House. a horror movie first. That is that with comedy, you know, weave through it and mm -hmm. these balances kind of work. And that's what's kind of funny about how slapstick works, where as I'm watching, like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, again, I'd seen it yeah. once before in the theater. Oh, yeah. And I'm reminded of how he is such a master of not just 
not just uh, violence, but of comedy. Mm -hmm. All of his violence is comedic. Mm -hmm. All of it is slapstick based. He rides this incredible line of horrifying and hilarious all at the same time. What's happening at the end of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I'm, you've seen this film, am I yes. not spoiling mm -hmm. it? Okay, yep. Yep, just to mm -hmm. make sure. It is so, like, I mean, it's brutal, it's super violent, and at the same time, it, it's almost like a Looney Tune. Oh, it's totally cartoon. Looney Tune. Yep, I agree. And, 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 and that, that is... That's my favorite part of the movie, is how, oh, my God. how wild and that his, ending is. His violence is also like a release. Like in every mm -hmm. in Django, same thing. Oh, yeah. It is a... It is like this... Uh, it, it's this. It's its own type of like violent catharsis that occurs. He builds his stories up with such tight tension and then like winds them up like a rubber band and lets them snap with yeah. these moments of extreme violence or extraordinary violence. And I, again, like nobody does gunshots like Quentin Tarantino. Nobody like mm. go back and watch, look at hateful eight, look at Django unchained. Yeah. The, so the point is that my whole bringing this up is just this idea that like you can do comedy and you can do, you can do something violent. You could do that's also really funny. You can do something horrifying. That's also really funny. That one second is so terrifying. And the next second is really funny or a great example. Look at return of living dead and reanimator and mm -hmm. dead alive. Even no, not dead alive return of living dead and reanimator two movies that where the actors and the performances are so serious. Mm. They're yeah. so completely serious that that's what makes it funny. So mm -hmm. you're watching somebody saw a cadaver, a reanimated cadaver's head off with a bone saw, and it's the funniest thing in the world because they they believe in it. Yeah. There's such conviction with what they're doing. So it's this weird sort of back and forth. So hearing that there's this thing in the studio, you yeah. know, push and pull with Trimark and the director and whatever, um, you know, about the tone – and having something just sort of seesaw from feeling one way to another, as we described as children, like what we felt like watching this, mm -hmm. we felt only the horror side. Yep. We didn't yep. see, we were too young to understand the comedy side of what was all there, mm -hmm. that fine line that they were doing. But speaking of violence, yeah, my second favorite death with that cop later. So he's killed the cop. The cop's been dead for a while. But at the end, Jennifer Aniston's, it's in the last few minutes, I remember. She's running to the cop car. She thinks he's alive. He's all bloody and gross, and then Leprechaun's there, good old Lep, and he, <laughs> oh, she, that's right, she she takes the cop's baton, and she jams right. it into, into little Lep's eye. It's really violent. It's yes, really violent. It's pretty gross. Yeah, I, you know, I have to say, even though this movie at times almost felt like an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode, and no shade, love that show, but oh, like the way that. it's shot and the music, it, at times I'm like, this sure. is just like, you know, Canadian TV or something. But <laughs> they didn't shy away from the gross stuff. So now he's got his green, he has green blood, of course, because he's a leprechaun. Right. And he doesn't have an eye. And so he actually then gets in the car with her. She's in the back. She's screaming, you know, good old cop car horror. <laughs> right. And... And he pulls an eyeball out of the dead cop and inserts it into his <laughs> socket. And I'm just like, wow, like uh, how, like this is cinema. This is early 90s yeah, dude. horror cinema. So green blood is, that's how you get around the censors. Oh, if it's smart. green, yeah. if it's green blood, that's what they did in From Dust Till Dawn. If you have, oh yeah, okay. If you're the way that you're going to mask that is, yeah, give the leprechaun green blood, which you're is right. Also, yeah. kind, of, kind of an Irish. There's like <laughs> I think there's a thing about like you know green blood or something. Yeah. So it's like another example of like this weird, weirdly <laughs> uh, stereotypical yeah, uh, you're right, Irishness you're right. connection. But listen, we all have. I guess there, the, it exists for, there, there's a lot of that stuff. And totally. That's what it is, man. Yeah, because you know? by the end, when he's climbing out of the well and he's just this mushy thing, he's all green. Right. Oh my God, you're right. And, it's, and it makes me think of like movies like Troll, Troll 2. I feel like there was a lot of green yeah. goo oh, yes. in those ones, you know? Well, um, they were vegetarians. Those trolls, they turn you oh, into plants yeah. so they that's could right. eat you. 
Yes. Speaking of vegetarians, <laughs> I f- had forgotten because, you know, Jennifer Aston plays this girl, Tori, in this movie who's very high maintenance. We like she's her, but very she's high maintenance. Right. Yeah. She hates this old house. She can't. I don't even they don't really make it clear what they're even what she and her dad are doing in this house. I guess they're just renting it for the Wait, summer or something. The boy, isn't the little boy her little brother or is he with the, the, so, the simpleton? Uh, Oddly enough, the little boy is with the simpleton, and the little right. boy is the brother of the hunky painter. But right. I'm like, I was about to there's say like painters. a good there's painters. Yes, right, they're, they're, right. they're called they're called like three yeah, guys that paint guy. is their there's like company the guy. name. I forgot about yeah. the guy too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's from uh, yeah his name I forget his name uh, Ken Olant I believe he's from uh, April Fool's Day others you know horror fun oh. 80s movie. So yeah, he's our leading man who is is pretty. You know, he's a pretty side character. But yeah, they're this random trio of, of painters. But um, speaking of vegetarian, I had forgotten that in her all of her high maintenance stuff, which some of it is warranted, but at the, they're at the diner. They've they've uh, taken her dad to the hospital because he has that really fun scene where he thinks it's a cat in this hole in the stump and he's putting his hand in there. Here, kitty, kitty, we all know oh, what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you that remember was, that? that? Dude, that was crazy too. Yes, that was scary. That's a great moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you know. Because you just you know. know. You're just waiting for oh, it. And he's God. like, come on, kid. And they're watching and then, ah, and then his hands like, yeah. oh, shoot up. And then you yep. see a, a really kind of dumb, you know, sort of CGI or whatever. You know, you see Warwick Davis <laughs> in the hole and he's like, ah, you know, but so they've taken him to the hospital. And so now they're at a diner. And I just thought it was funny, speaking of vegetarian, that on top of all of her high maintenance stuff, he says to her, the the pretty guy, um, Nathan is his name. He goes, you know, you're pretty thin. You should have some roast beef or something dumb. And she goes, I don't eat meat. I don't eat anything, such a 90s, you know, and such it's a funny because it's like, uh... Oh, are we like supposed to be annoyed by that? She's like, I don't eat meat. Yeah. I'm a vegetarian. And he's like, oh, God. And isn't it funny? Like, I'm, I'm watching. I'm like, hey, you go, girl. That's great. But it's like back then it's like, oh, God. Today, no one would even probably bat an eyelash. They'd be more like, wow, right. he's like telling her to like. Yeah. You know, the focus eat. is like, uh, fuck off. Don't tell me what to eat. I'm good. Thanks. Right. 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 Then, right. Right. Yeah, that's what's yeah. fun. That's what's kind of funny. Yeah. I mean, uh huh. <laughs> Little girls shouldn't look for four-leaf clovers. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing that I thought was fun, again, going back to our guy Freddy and how popular he was. This movie, do you remember, Jeff, towards the end, as everything's going haywire, Jennifer Aniston's on the phone. Um, she's, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think she's trying to call for help. The phone's dead, but it rings. And, oh, and and it's him. It's a leprechaun. She right. rips it off the wall, but it's still ringing. Ooh. And... Obviously, very Freddy, Freddy Krueger, right? Very Freddy. And anyone <laughs> yeah. would be like, okay, don't answer the phone. We obviously know it's Leprechaun. But she goes, she bends down, she picks it up. And as we know, in both Nightmare 1 and then New Nightmare, there's some fun phone, gross, right. you know, tongue, tongue action. Yep. Iconic, right? And mm-hmm. this movie totally, totally copies that. Totally rips that off with a little gross hand coming out of the mouth. Do you remember that moment? Which, and I mean, which is so, which is what, like, what an opportunity yeah. To do it's like when you have in a weird kind of way the leprechaun and Freddy kind of operate in similar spaces. The leprechaun's powers are terrestrial and like and like right. tangible while Freddy operates in the incorporeal and right, the, in the dream, dream world. world. So yeah. it's like you it would be a shame to be if, when you fall fall asleep you got to worry about Freddy and when you wake up assuming that you have his gold you have to worry about the leprechaun. Mm-hmm. That is a straight up ripoff, Mark Jones and team yeah, of Little Bit. But a little bit. Leprechaun. It's out. It's out of the crate. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, there's going to be a new movie that we'll talk about, so stay tuned and please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram for updates. Bye.